hello, hello, hello. I'm literally running out <laughs> from um, prepping dinner to come here. Okay, who is here? I'm going to wait a few minutes. Hopefully, more of you will be joining. Hello, if you can hear me and see me properly, please drop me a little comment in the chat box. Hey, Rose. Okay, I can see the numbers now coming up. Yay. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's give everybody a couple more minutes and then I'm gonna get in. Hey, Katty. I can hear and see you, amazing. Hey, Quentin. Anna, hi. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's getting a little bit dark here, but it's fine. I think we can manage. This is not going to be a crazy long live. I'm going to get straight to the point with you guys. I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you for being here. So today I'm wanting to share and chat about being on a healthy journey and ditching the diets and adopting a, a healthier lifestyle and finding consistency in our journey and it's going to be more focused on weight management and weight loss but this is this is a this is going to be good for anybody that's on a health journey and is maybe struggling to stick to it and it's coming on and off and just really struggling to stay with it um, if some of you are on a health journey, on a weight loss journey, pop me a comment in the on the side as well. I'd love to know where you are, what you're struggling with at the moment, and what you're hoping to learn um, with me in the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, while you're doing that and writing some bits and bobs here, I'm going to quickly just a little bit, not talk about myself too much because... <laughs> Because you can find some videos of me here talking about my health journey. But my health journey started in 2008 when I was still a professional dancer here in the UK. I was traveling the world a lot and I worked with a lot, a lot of incredible artists, including, oh my God, Take That, Kylie Minogue, Robbie Williams, Madonna, like many, many incredible artists. And I was constantly on the road touring the world with them. And I, I struggled to look after myself and my body started burning out. I had loads of acne everywhere, terrible gut issues, and I just didn't know how to eat. And then from then on, I started my health journey. Of course, being a model and dancer, I had my fair share of, oh my God, am I too big? Do I need to be skinnier? Blah, 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 blah. Um, I never really dieted because I never really know how to diet even though we can say my diet was mainly Haribo's and tequila and burgers, but I never really went through a really that big diet. The first time I had major, yeah, major issues with body acceptance was actually two years ago uh, when I had to go through what we call a GAPS diet to heal my guts because my gut, it was just so hard, not two years ago, more than two years ago, like we're talking four years ago. And I really, really struggled with my body weight. I was really thin. Um, and that's when, for the first time, I really understood what it is like to struggle with what we look like, right? Nobody noticed because for everybody, oh my God, you're so skinny, you look great. But I felt awful. I just wouldn't put any crop top. It was just like constantly hiding myself. And I thought, wow, you really, really you know, the value, how we put our own value in our body is absolutely crazy. And I had to work really hard to learn to accept my new body. And I'm still thinner than, you know, what, you know, I used to be bigger. I used to be a little bigger, not a lot, maybe a size bigger, but it's just getting used to the body we have or what we had and what we want now. And I had to accept that, okay, this is my healthy body. I can't go back to eating how I used to eat and live on burgers and alcohol and tequila. Um, I'm thinner and it is what it is. And if you're wondering what being thin is such a big deal, I think, you know, coming from, I'm from Togo and in my culture, you're beautiful when you're bigger, when you have curves, when you have shapes, like, you know, African women, like, 
curvy and gorgeous. And for me being thin, I was like, oh my days. Oh, <laughs> it was so hard. I would say it took me a good year. Up till last year, I was still really very much low key working on body acceptance. And I never really talk about it because most people struggle with, they feel fat. They don't like what they see, you know, but at the end of the day, when you struggle with what you struggle with in your head, how you see yourself is really where the deal is. It's really learning to love your body again, detaching your self-value, who you are from what you look like, because it's so different. And all every single one of you are beautiful, amazing, and your value doesn't call it's not what you look like, basically. So yeah, that's been my little, my little, my big body acceptance work in the past, like. A couple of years ago, I feel better now where I am. I'm still a little bit thinner than I would love to be. I'd love to pick up two, three kilos, but listen, it is what it is. Okay, let's dive in. Let's talk about weight management, weight loss, and sticking to it. Some of you may or may not know. Oh, I'm seeing the comments now. I'm struggling with eating healthy. Sorry, removed. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Why it's harder for me to get motivated. Yeah. Oh, I know. We all want to be sick. <laughs> uh, plateauing. Okay. All right. Let's 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 get into it. I'm gonna answer everybody's question. I've got some notes here. So big disclaimer, I have a eating for your healthy body weight nutrition course at the moment, which I'm going to be talking about at the end. It's a mini course. It's a short course. It's 57 pounds, which is, I'm not sure how many dollars is that maybe $70, but I think it's way well worth the value of everything you're learning there, including foods, including nutrition plans, etc. Now let's talk about reaching a healthy body weight. Before I dive into the tips, there are two things. Number one thing I've noticed with my clients is that they struggle to lose the weight because they actually don't understand why, number one, they've put the weight on, or two, they're struggling to lose it, right? Because it's not always a calorie thing. All these online programs and these weight loss experts, a lot of them that are not registered nutritionists, that are not trained, don't say those things because they don't know them. You're sometimes you're not you're not bigger because you have you know you're eating too much. Sometimes it has nothing to do with it. You may have gained weight for many different reasons, and some of the reasons will be physiological, such as hormonal imbalance, gut issues. I love working with people with gut issues because that's something I've struggled with myself. And a lot of the time, when I work with people on gut issues right? And we balance their gut. We clean the gut. We check what's happening. We balance the microbiome, right? The bacteria, the good and the bad. We make sure they're more good than bad. A lot of the time, one of the biggest side effects we see is they just all of a sudden drop like three, four kilos, right? And we haven't even tried trying to lose weight. It's just correcting certain things because the state of your microbiome plays such a huge role on how you process your food, on how on how you eat on your hunger because they control your hunger hormones, right? The ghrelin and the leptins, those hunger hormones that dictate whether you're full, whether you're satiated, whether you want to eat more, your gut microbiome has an impact on that. So if you're on a weight loss journey and you're struggling to lose weight or you, you're you just plateauing, have a look, check, do I have any gut symptoms, right? It's something I go over through in the course, ask you the right questions and, and give you a bit more of direction. Then we have hormonal issues, right? Hormonal issues can also be a cause of weight gain, right? Especially um, hypothyroid, you know, it's one of those examples where it makes you basically, your metabolism slows down and you might struggle to lose weight or you might put on weight easily because you have a slower metabolism, right? You're not burning as much or things are not working as they should. And again, this is something you can correct in a clinical environment with a nutritionist, with someone. Then, um, so this will be the physiological aspects of things. Then the other part of the thing is Sometimes, and I know this one is a hard one, and some of you may struggle with these, but sometimes 
When we are plateauing with our weight loss, it could also mean that we have reached our healthy body weight, right? We know all men, we, we're not all supposed to have the same body shape to be either super thin or, 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 or thicker, like, like I would like to be, or, you know, we all have our definition of a healthy body weight. If you feel good in your body, right, you walk out, you're working out, you're moving, you're eating well, you're eating balanced, and you're thinking, God, I'm plateauing. This is it. I'm not moving anymore. And you know you don't have any hormonal issues or anything like that. You have reached your healthy body weight. And this is when we've got to accept what it is. This is it. And that's when you shift into more. I refuse for this. <laughs> I love that. Brilliant. But this is where we have to start working on body acceptance and trust me i know i'm not on that side where i'm trying to be thinner i'm not the other side where i'm trying to be bigger i get it i get it sometimes i'm like oh god surely i can't be this thing like i used to be thicker girl <laughs> give me a little something right but i'm not gonna go out there and start eating more fat or a lot of junk food to try to put on weight because you wouldn't honor my body right to eat the kind of thing I used to eat before, it wouldn't, it really wouldn't work with me. It would totally ruin my gut and I'll feel awful, right? So ask yourself, okay, I'm plateauing. What can I do next? Like, what is this happening? What can I check? Have I reached a point of body acceptance where I have to accept things where they are, if I'm feeling light, if I'm feeling good, right? So that's a really, really important one, really important one, um, because that could take the pressure off, you know? Um, and make you eat, you know, with ease, with love. And okay, now let's talk about, of course, the other side is the third point. So you've checked your hormonals and your physiological changes, and you check that if you're plateauing, it's not a matter of accepting your body as it is. Obviously, that means you're doing everything that you sh you should be doing as. A person who's looking after the health and that includes moving your body regularly eating a balanced diet not going from a place of restriction but from a place of abundance right and really looking after yourself right if you're doing all these things and your weight is plateauing it's time to ask yourself the physiological or the body acceptance thing um now let's talk about tips in weight loss one of the things that, and I've just finished working with one of my um, one of my ladies on my three months one-on-one um, -on -one coaching program, and she came with me to me to lose weight, and there was other things, right? We worked together for three months every week, so it was more like um, it was a wellness, a well-being, a life coaching as well. But one of the things she was doing, she was eating like her partner, right? Her partner is a guy. I, I think he goes a lot to the gym. He doesn't eat any carbs, like nothing, like zero cocoa, like nothing. And she was eating like that. And I said, and she was like, I'm putting on weight. And I'm like, of course you're putting on weight. Like your adrenals are going crazy. They're thinking, why is this woman like not giving me carbs? You need carbs, right? But you need the good carbs. And again, this is something I go over in the course and I give you, you know, Detail by detail, how much vegetables, how many things to eat, how to increase it, blah, blah, blah. But what you want to think is think about your mindset, right? When you're on a weight loss journey, are you approaching your weight loss journey from a place of punishment? Are you doing this for yourself? Or are you doing, or are you doing it from a place of self-love where I'm here, I'm going to honor my body because I'm not feeling good or my health is threatened or I feel heavier than usual and I want to lighten up the load and I want to energize my body. Where are you doing this from? Is it from a place of punishment or from a place of self-love? And these are two things to kind of understand for you to make the journey easier, right? So don't restrict. The minute we restrict ourselves, we're humans. If I start restraining myself, Next thing I will do is I'll binge, I'll binge, right? So with the restriction, find balance, right? Whatever you know you need to do to keep your weight, to keep losing the weight or doing whatever you need to do to maintain that, do it, but make sure once a week you have that meal that you enjoy. Perhaps it's not the meal that is in your plan, but perhaps it makes you happy, just have that one meal. You'll be absolutely fine because the game and the goal here is not to 
yeah, you want to lose the weight, but the goal should be, I want to be the healthiest I've been. I want to be so freaking healthy. I want to feel amazing. I want to feel energized. So let's go. I'm going to look after myself. I'm going to honor my body. I'm going to feel fantastic, right? That is your goal. And that's where you should be thriving. That's where you should be going towards, right? And with that, we'll come weight loss if your body needs to lose the weight. But again, if your body has reached its natural, normal body weight, you will plateau. You will stay there. Right. And again, I also had a client which was younger, um, this gorgeous girl. And she came to me. She's like, well, when I eat at the weekend, I put the weight back on. And when I eat well in the week, I'm like, because that is your normal body weight. If you starve yourself in the week or you eat, you know, less of a certain thing, you're super strict. And on the weekend, you go and have a pizza and you put on weight. That is your normal body weight because you should be able to have a pizza in the weekend or whatever is your thing without putting tons of weight on or without doing yo-yo. So it really is about finding that balance and sticking to it. Then um, I think most people, most of you would know what to eat and how to eat, right? But one of the other things as well, and Katy said, that's me, what, the weekend thing, eating well in the week and then in the weekend <laughs> struggling. <laughs> I know a lot of my clients do that. Um, Rose as well. But it really is about finding that balance and making a plan that makes sense to you. You always have to adapt. Nobody knows your body better than yourself. Not even the best nutritionist, the best doctor, the best everything in the world, right? You know your body better. I might give you a plan. You might come and do my nutrition for weight management course, right? I'm going to give you X amount of vegetables to eat a day. These are the best vegetables. This is this. There might be a few things that don't work for you. You might think, you know, I'm not sure. You've got to listen to yourself first. And then in the plan I give you, it's up to you to say, okay, this one is great. A couple of times in the week, I'm going to go for my favorite meal, which might not be in the plan, which might be uh, not a complex carb, but more of a simple carb. Like you've got to make it work because it's not about dieting. It's about changing your lifestyle in the long haul. And that takes time. It took me months to change. What am I saying? Years <laughs> to change my lifestyle from Haribo tequila burgers and not knowing how to cook and just eating crap and having the worst skin and gut, constantly tired, burn out to I love what I eat, but I still had like burger. I smashed a burger yesterday. And last week when I was out in a restaurant, I ate whatever I wanted to eat. But when I'm home and eating home 90% of the time, I eat well. I eat balanced. I don't eat a lot of sugar because candida comes in and out of my body. So me and sugar are not friends. But I eat well. I eat fine. But when I go out, I eat what the heck I want to eat because I know that most of the time my diet is great or great for me, right? So this is the lifestyle you're going towards. I don't feel like I'm being punished every day, like in my life, like, oh my God, like, no, not at all, right? So you've got to find that thing that works for you. And that's the point. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle change and a gradual lifestyle change, something you want to start step by step. And don't worry if you start something and it's not working, right? Tweak it, change it, keep trying. Don't jump from a diet to another, from a trend, from keto to paleo to something to celery juice. Like it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Like, can you do keto for the rest of your life? No, and you freaking shouldn't, right? So find what works for you and stick to it, okay? All right, let's take a few questions now. I wanted to keep this under 20 minutes, but this is 19 minutes. All right, pop me some question in the box. I'm going to put the lights on. That's a bit better. Sorry, I've been in the dark the whole time. That's a bit silly for me. <laughs> All right, ask me the questions. I'm going to scroll up. Um, so I used to be, so this is Melissa that says that I seem to keep getting stuck and plateauing as I keep losing. What do you recommend when this happens? Yeah, I'll just say, you know, check if there is any hormonal imbalance, any gut issues there. Um, are you eating well? What do you mean by eating well? Like how much fiber are you having? How much are you eliminating? The other thing I didn't mention, and I talk about this a little bit more in the course, is toxins, right? Toxins play a big role as well. Like 
Are you, you know, do you have a lot of toxins in your body that needs to get out? How much do you eliminate? So bowel movement, sweating. So check those things. And then someone else ask for motivation. And if it's motivated, motivation related, that's where, and again, that's something I talk about the course. Are you doing this for you or for someone else? Or are you being a victim of the diet culture, which we all are to a certain extent, right? I'm, I'm a victim, not of the diet culture, but of the society. Like, you know, if you're African girl, you got to be thick. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not thick, you guys, help me, right? We all victim of something, right? But we've got to be aware of it, right? Got to be aware of it. That doesn't mean it's going to disappear. But if you're losing motivation, why are you losing motivation? How important it is for you to lose the weight or whatever it is you're working on, right? To feel lighter, to feel more energized. If your health matters to you, if it's so important, you're going to put it back. I'm not saying sometimes you're not like, uh, but just refreshing yourself, get your journals out. Okay, why was I doing this in the first place? Do I just want to lose weight, but I feel okay because I want to put my little bikini on in the summer? Or is this like, no, this is my health. I've got health goals. I want to feel good. I wasn't born to feel like, oh, I want to feel good. I want to live my best life. I want to be the best versions of myself, right? What is the reason? What's the reason why? Use that and it's going to help you find your motivation again. All right. And you have another question. Why when I get, when I fast, I get skinny and then a couple of days later I get fat? That's very interesting, but that comes back to restriction, right? You don't need to fast. Also, do you get fat or do you pile water back on, right? Because it's very different, right? Water retention and getting fat um, and checking at what time of the month is that happening for you. Like, I know I re retain a lot of water before my period, during my period, and then about five days after my period or finish, I go... Pfft. Um, again, so, but fast then eat a little food and fast again. I don't believe, I don't believe in anything that you cannot sustain for the rest of your life, right? So fasting for 18 hours. Yeah. If you're working on something and your nutritionist says, okay, we're going to fast for a few days because X, Y, Z, you're following something. Yeah. But as a lifestyle for every day, I do not believe on something we cannot sustain all the time. This should be easy. Our health journey should be easy in the sense of you will feel challenged mentally, but it shouldn't be something like, oh my God, I can't have to fast for 18 hours. I eat dinner. I haven't eaten dinner yet, so that's a bit naughty, but because I'm doing this, but I have breakfast at 10.30. I have lunch at 3. And I have dinner usually around 7.30, right? So... I eat, I have about a 14 hours gap or something like that, fasting, but it doesn't feel like fasting. It's just because I'm not hungry at eight and I like cracking up two hours of work before I sit down and eat. It works for my lifestyle. It works for me. That's how I eat. And also I like eating like sardines and like I eat like really savory food in the morning. I could eat rice, like, right. So that at 8 a.m. wouldn't work for me. So very important to Adopt a lifestyle that works for you that you can sustain every day for the rest of your life. The minute we fall into the gap of doing something that works for three days and then we put the back the weight back on, that means that's not what you need. You need to find something else, right? That works for you. I'm struggling on if you're about how do I start eating healthy on a low budget? I would say vegetables and water. Just make sure every time you eat, have to had add two handful of vegetables to your meals drink loads of water and cut processed sugar that will always be my three top advice to anybody that says to me i want to start eating healthy what should i do cut the processed sugar let's get rid of it for sugar use fruits use a little bit of honey you're good honey and fruit is all you need uh every time you eat add more vegetables loads of veg and drink a liter and a half, two liters of water a day, minimum. It is, you can fast. Fasting is not a bad thing. Sometimes I fast, but I fast because I want to do something and it lasts three days, but it's not an everyday thing. It's good having a gap, but it doesn't work for everybody, right? Someone who's struggling with adrenal fatigue or 
um, hormonal imbalance or energy problems or blood sugar imbalance, fasting might not work for you, right? Really is a case by case thing with fasting. Okay, my lovelies. Any other questions? Have I missed anybody? If I have a little blah blah blah, I think that's it really. So I'm gonna pop the link to the course. Please do check it out. Just read, check what it is about. I'd love to have you in there. It's a self study course. Once you have access to it, you have it for life, and then that's it. And I will probably be doing, depending how many people I have on the course, I would love to do in a month or so a coaching with those who buy it with their questions and just help them navigate the journey a little bit more. I do hope regardless that you've learned some stuff today and yeah, leave some comments and I'll come back to this as well. The other thing I actually didn't talk about was, because I wanted to keep this under 20 minutes, but it's too late now. Um, one of you guys, probably not you if you're here, put a comment on one of the videos saying, I love your content, but I don't like the weight loss content thing. And I thought, wow, I forgot how weight loss could be triggering, right? For many, many people, you know, just like weight gain. <laughs> Someone said to me, oh, you got to be thick. I'm not, oh, here we go. Could be triggering. And I think it's because of diet culture and I understand and also I'm very aware as a practitioner, it's something I tread with very carefully. But I'm also very aware that a lot, a lot of, People who struggle with food-related issues and um, eating disorders. But at the end of the day, when something triggers you as an individual, especially food-related, you see on internet, you have two options. You don't follow the person anymore. You get out of there and you ask yourself, why am I triggered by this? What does that mean? Because it's not the other person fault, right? And it goes for everybody. I follow a lot of people. If they trigger me, something triggers me. I'm like, oh, what is triggering you? Is there an issue you need to deal with? Are you jealous of something? Do you wish it was you? Or is this just triggering? You're like, I don't want to see that, right? So that's something I want to leave you with. Obviously, if you're here, you're probably not triggered by weight loss content. You're probably working on your journey, but it could be, you know, for anything else. Um... No more questions, so I'm going to leave it here. You're very welcome. Quick on core strengths for new mamas. I'm not going to do any um, ab workouts and things like that, talk about blah, 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 Pilates or anything, because this is just nutrition. But I'm going to pop here. If you haven't seen it yet, my um, Pilates for weight management series, it's only available until Wednesday. People are loving it. I launched it last week. So do get it. There will be a series two and three as well. Um, it's a mix of strength and Pilates and low and high energy. There's no high impact jump, but it's great. Uh, you can do this if you're prenatal. Someone asked me the prenatal for new mamas. Yeah, you can do it. It is challenging, So, but you have access to it for at least a year. So you can work your way through the videos. You're very welcome. Thank you, everybody. I hope you learned some stuff. Keep leaving comments once the video is uploaded and I will um, come back and read all your comments because I always do and I will give you as many answers as I can. Don't forget to check out the courses, the Pilates course for weight management, but it's not just for weight management. It's for you if you want to take you know, challenge yourself, get some energy, feel toner, like stronger, tone your body. That series is for you. And uh, also check out the nutrition for weight management. Loads of love. I'm keeping this under 30 minutes, 29 minutes. I'm out. Bye. <laughs>